Lancaster, Ohio is the first stop of the PWBA's fall tour. And if it's the fall, it's Carol Giannotti block time. She was the winner of three events last year in the fall, and she's in third position tonight in pursuit of PWBA title number 13. The star of the seven event PWBA fall tour is next. I'm Leander Riley, and for the first time in national history, the PWBA is making a visit to Lancaster, Ohio, and they are certainly glad they did. I'm also glad to introduce my broadcast partner, Jan Schmidt. And Jan, our opening telecast, our opening match, will begin with Kendra Cameron against Carolyn Doran Ballard. And these are two women who have already won in 1998. They have, and they're both in their fourth telecast on the year, but with one big difference. Kendra Cameron's in her first year on tour. She's very confident, very happy with her performance so far. In fact, better than what she expected. On the other hand, Carolyn Doran Ballard is coming off a great year where she was named runner-up to player of the year. She had 10 shows last year, so it's a subpar year for her. It shook her confidence a bit, but she went home and practiced, 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 and she's proof positive that practice can indeed make perfect. Our number three qualifiers from the land down under, Carol Giannotti Block. Six times this year, she was a runner-up, but she's known as a fall bowler. She sure is. Last fall, she made the top five in six out of the eight tournaments and won three of those events. If she continues on that pace this fall, she'll definitely be the forerunner for Bowler of the Year. Marianne DeRupo is our number two qualifier, and she, too, has already won in 1998, having won in Omaha, Nebraska, but she's a league leader in many categories. She is, and she's... She shows, once again, why she's one of the most consistent players on tour, not only week to week, but year to year. Right now, she's fourth in all of our categories, earnings, points, and average. And our number one qualifier is none other than Liz Johnson. She is looking for her first title of 1998 in this, her fourth television appearance. And another player that's having a little bit less than what she expected for the year. She came out and took the tour by storm, winning two titles in her rookie year. Her sophomore year, she made eight shows, won three titles, no sophomore jinx, but perhaps a junior jinx. But she's 2-0 from the top seed position, so maybe she'll turn it around tonight. Well, she'll have to wait and see because we begin with Kendra Cameron against Carolyn Dorn Ballard in our opening match. And that is Kendra Cameron on the right of your ski. And that is Carolyn Dorn Ballard taking a seat. Kendra Cameron is going to bowl first. As I said, great opening year for her. However, does not qualify as a rookie. Too many events were bowled prior to this season. Coming up a little high in her first shot, leaving the 6'10". They, they told me right before we started that the leans were going through their transition, starting to change, getting that carry down, a little bit of movement with the conditioner. So right now, I think both the players might have to fish a little bit for the first few frames. And again, I'm sure she practiced that spare quite a while back in the lane. In, they had a little hook, but now with the carry down, it slid by. And now you're looking at Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Obviously, they're both right-handed. Should mention that Carolyn is the president of the PWBA Players Association. <laughs> now, Carolyn usually provides statistical support for us by working in our broadcast truck. Since she's obviously in front of the camera instead of behind it, her sister Kathy Doran is pinch hitting for her. And so all the little graphics you see come on screen, Kathy Doran's bringing them to us. And Lisa Wagner's sitting right beside us here doing stats, scorekeeping for us. And right now the score sounds like a baseball game, 9-7. to seven. Oh. And that changed that. She was a little worried for a minute. She yelled hook, afraid the ball would slide as Kendra's just did. 11 and 12 are the two lanes that we are using here at Tiki Lanes. Her average this week, 213 plus. Nice shot for Carolyn. Hit a little flat, 
leaving a little bit of a weak 10 pin, but in the pocket. Shot she just made. She's playing right around the 10th board, a little inside of that. This ball hits just half pocket right there. So the six pin lay down in the channel, doesn't take out the 10. Her high game this week was 269. From so lead to bowl well to take out Kendra Cameron, who qualified fifth. This year she's bowled 527 games and has a 210 plus average in those 527 games. She's got one title this year, Greater Sebring in Florida. Well, that's pretty impressive for her first full year on tour. But again, that's how these players are coming out. A lot more experience than we've ever seen before. Team USA experience, collegiate experience. They know how to bowl under pressure when they get here. Interesting that both of these bowlers, Kendra and Carolyn, opted to practice, practice, practice over the break. And it shows. Kendra's been working on her start position in her game. She's angling her feet. See how they're toward the direction she's aiming. She has a nice fluid arm swing and a real smooth release. Look at the finish position there. Oh, this is fun. the result. That came back a long way. Mm -hmm. She trusted it, gave it a lot of room. And it responded. And that's where she's tried to slow her speed down and try to open up the lane, play a little more arc, and that's what she's trying to do right now. Looked like it went the right path, but she just didn't get the pin action. Yeah, she's going to have a little trouble with some carry down throughout the first game, two or two maybe. The lanes changed a lot and quickly when they did change. When we talked with her last night, she said she had gotten away from arcing the ball. She started piping it, and she's retaught herself how to throw it slower. Yeah, she, because of some of the drier conditions that we had bowled on, we're still talking about Kendra here, she had started throwing too hard and straight, and she didn't want to continue to do that, so she worked on slowing up. Carolyn Dorn Ballard, who I said also practiced, and you mentioned that in the beginning of the telecast, changed pitches. She bowled every day, and she went by herself, which is uh, interesting because she's married to Del Ballard Jr., who is you know, on the men's tour. He's got a dozen titles to his name. Oh, yeah, it must be a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a wonderful shot. Hey, I'm not taking the blame for that pin standing up there. <laughs> she just have, has to shoot the spare and go on. She'll change balls to shoot the spare, cut her hook down, and go straight at it. <laughs> well, it must be a TV show. She converted. Let's take a look at some of our other finishers. Not making the TV show, but doing so well. You've got to talk about Michelle Feldman when it comes to pin count. She was in and pin fall, but didn't make the show because of match play. She also bowled a 300 this week. In the 10th spot, Kim Kennedy, a consistent year. It's the 10th time she's been in the top 12 this year. Carol Norman back on track, fifth cut in a row. Positions 14 through 17 begin with Rachel Perez. And we'll get to that one later because Carolyn Doran Ballard has just bowled a strike and she seems to have found her path. So we will continue with our opening match here at the Tiki Lanes. Don't go away. ESPN's coverage of the PWBA continues in just a moment. The championship round finals of the Visionary Bowling Products Classic are brought to you by Budweiser and Bud Light, the official beers of bowling. And by MasterCard, there are some things in life money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by AMF Bowling Worldwide, the largest owners and operators of bowling centers in the world and one of the leading makers of bowling products. AMF always means fun. <laughs> Welcome back to Tiki Lanes. I'm Leandra Riley along with Jan Schmidt and this is our first stop on the fall swing of the PWBA. We are in the beginning frames of our opening match between Kendra Cameron and Carolyn Doran Ballard. This is the fourth frame for Kendra Cameron. She's working on a spare. That was a nice 
shot. She has really slowed down her ball speed a lot. And one of the things she told us last night, Leandra, was that she used to err on the fast side. Now when she makes an error, it's on the slow side. So you'd be looking to see her ball jump. This is the perfect speed, flush into the pocket. Nothing has a chance to stand. That's way slower than we saw her throw all year. So she really has made a change. That was a bit lucky, came in a little high, but she gets the big X on the board. A double for Cameron as Carolyn Dorn Ballard steps up to the plate. And boy, did she talk about her mental approach, having worked by herself, going to the bowling center and focusing on a lot of things. And I think it was a confidence booster that she can use herself as a resource right, to make adjustments. Exactly. Le Leandra Dell was out here with her a lot this year. And I think she began to rely on him in a lot of ways, and she wanted to renew in her mind that she could do it all on her own. So off the strike in the fourth frame, she leaves the 10 pin in the fifth. Another good shot on lane 12. Nine pin last time, 10 pin this time. She just has to keep throwing it like she is. Sometimes Carolyn takes a few frames to get started on TV. She's really throwing the ball well tonight. We spoke with Carolyn earlier, and we talked to her about changes this year. After a great year last year, why make changes this year? Well, there are a few reasons. I bowled a tournament in June uh, with the wheelchair bowlers in Arizona. And after that tournament, I felt like I was really squeezing the ball a lot. And I didn't feel as confident on what I was doing with the ball, the way it was looking down the lane. And that also had an overall effect on my attitude, and I developed a really bad attitude. So after the summer swing, when I did not perform as well as I had expected. In Rockford, I changed my pitches. I really liked it. I liked my performance in Rockford. Went home, attitude adjustment, changing pitches, changed all my balls, and here I am. So obviously, it's a step in the right direction. And it did pay off because when she bowled a 150 game, she didn't panic. And she turned around in the same evening, bowled a 269. So she settled herself down and really worked on her mental game in addition to her pitches and other things. Now Kendra Cameron is working on a double in the sixth. 16 and 8 in match play. But half pocket leaving that 10. You just saw that 16 and 8 match play record. That's the reason she's in the show. Without it, she wouldn't have been because she's sixth in pinfall. It's coming in a little bit late. See, it's still sliding. Half pocket. Messenger wanted to go across, but didn't make it. Oh! Talk about the soft side. <laughs> that was a soft touch. She's having a little trouble going across at the 6 and 10 pin. The ball's really sliding for her, never gripping the lane. And this match is even as we move over to the seventh frame on lanes 11 and 12 here in Lancaster, Ohio. Tiki Lanes, the staff here, has just been great this week. strike for Kendra Cameron but nothing is over yet in this opening match and we will continue don't go away as the PWA's first stop of 1998's fall swing continues we are back with professional women's bowling associations visionary bowling products classic in 1997, the Robbie Award was presented to Kim Kennedy for being the bowler who best exemplifies the image of professional bowling both on and off the lanes. In addition to that, she was a five-time PWBA titleist in her career. And here's some other Robbie Award winners beginning with the 1990s. Leanne Barrett, some very familiar names, Carol Norman, Kelly Burke, Romeo, Kennedy again in 1995, Steenson, and Kim Kennedy, there you see her winning for last year. She just got her trophy, was engraved and prepared for her as Carolyn Dorn Ballard leaves the 10 pin for the fourth time in this match. Just has not been able to carry on lane 12, the ball driving hard first, leaving that 9 pin, then she made a move for that, and now it's 10 pin, 10 pin. But she wants to just stay clean right now, match all even, and hopefully she'll carry a double. Her spare conversions are very, very strong. I like adversity. 
Nothing like adversity. There's something big flying around out a horse here. fly, yeah, that was a dragonfly, I mean, kind of got into the door. You know, it's funny, we're calling this the fall tour, but it's been 80-something degrees this week. It's more like summer. Yeah, it's a dragonfly buzzing around. It is, and it's Right very, above the bowler's heads. Yeah, very close to her. That's why she's holding off here, and she really needs to do that because I'll, I'll tell you, that happened to me once on the show. One of them landed right on the first arrow I was aiming at, and it moved right as I released the ball. It was not a good thing. Yeah. Continuing now with our finishers, as you look at the number 17 position, Karen Stroud of Canyon, Texas, she bowled a 300. In 18th, Lisa Bishop, our reigning Ebonite Rookie of the Year, and Debbie McMullen, she's cashed in 14 of the 17 events this year. Dragonfly is gone, and so are all 10 of the pins. Bring back the fly. Good luck, Charm. She is dialed in on lane 11. Kendra Cameron worked with uh, John Gaines as we look now at her maximum score, which is 238. Coming off the strike in the seventh. Ooh, mm. yeah, she's not carrying too much on that lane either. That was pretty weak, though. I thought, thought for a minute the six was going to lay down on the ten and kick it out. Conversion looked a lot stronger than the last one. You mentioned John Gaines. He is her coach, also her significant other, and he helped her with some of the changes, slowing down and arcing the ball more. And if I might add, he's a cutie. He's on hand tonight, <laughs> watching, rooting her on. Even going into the line. <laughs> Little tension here. That was a big strike. However, Carolyn Dorn Ballard could still shut out Kendra Cameron because Carolyn has a strike up in the eighth. And to complete our top 24, special note about Tammy Eisworth. Unfortunately, she had to withdraw with a bad back, hence the 24th place finish. I'm sure she would have climbed a little higher if she was able to stay healthy. Big shot. What do you say? What do you say? Yes. Oh. And what do we say to that? Nothing. Nothing. We're speechless. Look at this dead flush. Backing off for a minute, and our our fly is back. Yeah, dragonfly came back. Okay, he's out of the way. It's the bright television lights that attract the insects. <laughs> yes, a turkey, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. She needs a strike right here to shut out Kendra Cameron. And then she would need one pin. This is the one that will shut out Kendra Cameron. a big hello to Big G and Marianne in New Jersey. They're watching their daughter and smiling from ear to ear. Look at this shot. She wasn't sure for a minute. Little half pocket, wondering if she's going to slap the 10. Get the six pin off the wall. Took it out. She needs 
one pin here. Wrap things up here in this first match. 228 for Carolyn Doran Ballard. Tremendous execution by Carolyn from the second frame on. That's two for Kendra Cameron, but it is a moot point because Carol and Doran Ballard moves on as she climbs up one rung of the ladder. She will meet Carol Giannotti Block. But first, we have these messages from our sponsors. Today's Ask a Pro question comes from 10-year-old Peter Maduri from Tonawanda, New York, who writes, I'm 10 years old and average around 165. My high game is 269, but I'm having trouble carrying the 10 pin. I use reactive resin. I try playing inside and outside, but I just can't carry the 10. Do you have any advice? Here to answer your question, Peter, is 15-time PWBA Titleist and Marie Dugan. Well, Peter, 165 for a 10-year-old is a great average. If you're leaving the 10 pin a lot, probably has a lot to do with the weight of your bowling ball. If you're throwing a lighter weight bowling ball, they're not as dynamic as the heavier balls, so they don't drive through the pins as well. You also want to make sure that you have the right surface on your bowling ball. The lanes are real oily, you want to make sure it's dull, and if, it, if the lanes are really dry, you want to make sure that you have a polished ball. You could try throwing your ball a little harder or a little softer to change the angle into the pins. But the most important thing, what hurts your average the most, is not when you leave the 10 pin, it's when you miss it. So you want to really make sure that you pick up your 10 pins. A great answer, Anne-Marie Dugan. Now, if you have a question for a PWBA member, drop us a line. Address it to Ask the Pros and Care of the PWBA at 7171 Cherryvale Boulevard, Rockford, Illinois, 61112. Or you can go on the World Wide Web at pwba.com. We'll try to answer some of your questions on the air in our future telecasts. It is time for our second match here. As you see the enthusiastic crowd here at the Tiki Lanes in Lancaster, Ohio. Carolyn Doran Ballard and Carol Giannotti Block. Carolyn Carroll. It is Doran Ballard who will bowl first in this the second match. She won by his final score of 228 to 217 to climb the ladder. Oh, after the break there, she was dialed in, hadn't missed on lane 11, came a little high after the break, pulled it left to target. She knew it from the beginning. She was fortunate to break up the split, though. This is something that was important this week. Break up the splits, shoot your spares. It's almost like defensive bowling. You're not really going out to knock them all down. You're just playing a more cautious style of game. She'll take it. No panic in her game as Carol Giannotti Block steps up. 5'7", 30 years old from Morley, Perth in Western Australia. And she opens with a bang and not a whimper. Boy, and she's been on a tear for two years. And don't blink when Carol bowls because you're, you'll miss her. She's one of the quickest ladies on tour, a five-step approach. Very athletic, just gets the ball moving and goes. And she gets a great ball reaction, wonderful roll. Look at the pin carry. Here's her second shot. She shouted, hit it. And the ball did just that. You know, in the uh, last match, the opening one against Kendra Cameron, Carolyn Doran Ballard was even with Kendra through seven frames. It's panic time. But this is the new attitude she's got. That's right. She got up and made five wonderful shots. It's a good lesson for everyone at home. Don't panic. When you miss a couple spares, when you bowl a bad game, make sure you can think clearly. Okay. And again, messenger doesn't catch it. Not carrying on lane 12. She'll shoot the spare. Back to that. Um, very important to make sure you stay calm, because if you don't, you can't think, and you can't watch your ball and read your ball reaction. Come in half pocket, head pin off the wall. It's going across. It sure looked like it may take it out. Put those brakes on. And 
she converts and crosses over. Hey, Delaware, yo, Delaware, Delaware, listen up. The best in professional women's bowling will be in Delaware for the Columbia 300 Delaware Open. The tournament runs from Saturday, September 26th through Wednesday, September 30th at Bolarama in Newcastle. For information on the Pro-Am where you can participate in the tournament, call Bolarama, area code 302-654-0263. Always a great event in Delaware. Please come out. We'd love to bowl with you. And I'll tell you, bowling in the programs is probably the best thing for an amateur's game. You just, you get, you're so close, you're into it, you get to talk with you folks, the pros, and just absorb stuff. Well, went high again. She said, hmm, so a little confused by that. I think on her fill ball in the 10th, she got it wide and left a two pin. Because of that, I'm sure she knows she can't swing it too wide, so maybe missing just a little bit left now. Three times she's left the 10 pin in combination or alone, and three times she has converted. Carol Ginotti Block is working on a double. Third frame, she steps up on lane 12, her average for the week just under 214. Ninth show this year, incredible. A turkey for Giannotti Block. Producer Jim Townsend's calling to take a look at it here, but uh, I don't know if we want to. It's a Brooklyn. Watch it cross over. Comes over. There it is. <laughs> Big break for Carol Giannotti Block. <laughs> look at her face. Maybe we should call her Carol Giannotti Break. <laughs> Boom. Her high game this week, 253. She has bowled a 300 already once this year. And if she, does, high. if she does, what will she get? She will get $50,000 from MasterCard. Ooh. I hear them twirling the combination to the bank vault in the back room. Come on. At 10. Oh, come on, it's lame. Jesus. That lane, you heard her, lane 12, again, wrapped the six around the 10 pin. That was a good shot. Six pin didn't sit in the channel. It flew around. Twice on this lane, she's left the solo 10. Twice on the other lane, she's left the 6-10 combination. Okay, so, so for the young man that wrote in about leaving 10 pins, please understand that the professionals do it too. They yes. make great shots, and sometimes they just don't fall. As Anne-Marie Dugan said, though, what counts is converting. Well, she's going to just try to stay in the game, keep making the shots she made last game. Put the ball in the pocket every frame, and that's all you can ask of yourself. It's all you can do, and hope you carry. Last year, she was runner-up player of the year. Yeah, this time was the other side of the deck, but she got them all. She gave that one more room. She sent it right a little bit through the front part of the lane. Four bagger for Carol Giannotti Block. Seven 300 games. Five in a row for Block. She's a girl who knows how to have a good time when family's in town. She did just that. We asked her about the break. Yeah, well, we had a lot of fun. Uh, my family come over from Australia, my mum, dad, my sister, uncle and auntie. So we travelled around America. I showed them, you know, right around. We went to New York, Florida for a week. My husband come out. We had our anniversary there. Went up to Memphis and New Orleans and they really had a good time. And, you know, they saw a lot of the country that probably a lot of Americans didn't see. So, and now they're out here with me this week. So I just hope that I can do it tonight. And, you know, we had a lot of fun. not here uh, he had to go back that is Neil Block whom she married and uh, there's her sister Robin Robin Giannotti, Giannotti yes. Block obviously being Neil's name as we now look at Carolyn Doran Ballard now, normally at this time we would take a break prior to this shot but we're 
We're laying off of that because Carol Giannotti Block is on course to bowl a 300 game, having bowled perfect shots through six frames. Carolyn Doran Ballard has a two bagger, five and six. Carolyn Doran Ballard, no stranger to having sh someone shoot a 300 at her on television. Uh, the only other lady to do it, Michelle Feldman, and it was against mm -hmm. Carolyn oh, Doran, Doran Ballard. Ballard. So MasterCard might want to put up a disclaimer that if you're against Carolyn Doran Ballard on TV. <laughs> Three in a row. Carolyn's going to keep fighting. That's all she can do. Keeps the pressure on Carol Giannotti Block. The last time... The last time her parents saw her bowl from Australia, Woo, we got seven, it was nine years ago, and she said she lost in the first match. Now they're here, and she might bowl a 300 game. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Oh. <laughs> that would be pretty incredible after nine years of them not being here, if they could be on hand for something like that. You know, I joked with her. I said, if you, if you do bowl a 300 on TV, what are you going to do? She said, I'm going to take the check and walk off. I won't finish the match. You did talk about <laughs> that. Did. I joked with her. <laughs> oh, we've got eight. Oh, my. Oh, uh -oh. my. Yes, I'm on the edge of my seat. So am I. And she knows it, and the house knows it, and all the bowlers in the tournament know it. And Carolyn Doran Ballard knows it. Yes. And hey, she just wants to keep making good shots. She's proud of what she's done. Did it all on her own this week. And she wanted to thank Dell for allowing her to do that, to take yeah. the time for herself. Sometimes you've got to be selfish, and that's what makes a marriage strong. Poor bagger, Carolyn Doran Ballard. She's smiling now. Like, well, those stubborn tens are falling. Mm -hmm. A little too late. But... Hey, wow. there's a few frames left. Look at all the strikes on the scoreboard. Mm. It's a lot of X. It's funny, the pressure is really somewhat off of her as the pressure increases for Carol Giannotti Block because Carolyn Doran Ballard is bowling for respectability. This woman. Oh, that's it. Oh, come oh, on. Wow. After eight beautiful frames of bowling, Carol Giannotti Block leaves two, knocking down eight in the ninth frame. And they just closed the vault. I heard it slam shut. You know, she still needs to be marking here because Carolyn could still come back and win this. What a great run. I thought we were going to see it. So did I. All right, we're going to take a deep breath. Everyone taking a, a little sigh here as our battle between Doran Ballard and Giannotti Block continues. Carol Giannotti Block in the 10th frame. Eight strikes, a spare in the ninth, and a stubborn 10 in the 10th. And she needs a mark here. If she would miss this, she'd have 256. Carolyn Doran Ballard could strike out to tie her. She needs to convert this spare after all those strikes, still needing a mark in the 10th. She gets the mark. And that secures the match. Eight strikes and two spares. Well, I guess in a way we should be happy that she didn't do it because she said she was going to leave if she, she bowled a 300 game. Yeah. She's going to take the money from MasterCard and run. And we don't have an alternate for TV, so I'm really not sure what would have happened. You know, that would have presented a technical problem. Maybe MasterCard should put in a little caveat that you have to finish the rest of the step ladder before you get the check. <laughs> So it's a 267 for Carol Giannotti Block, a five bagger for Carolyn Doran Ballard as she wraps things up in the 10th frame here. She will finish fourth, starting in the fourth position. Carolyn 
Dorn Ballard once again eliminating the 10 pin on a very exciting bowling match. Too bad somebody had to lose, but Carol Giannotti Block climbs the ladder. She will face Marianne DeRupo, our number two qualifier. And when we come back, we're going to define something for you. It's called the butt frame. What is it? What does it mean to you? We'll stick around to find out. It's number three versus number two here at the Tiki Lane for the Visionary Bowling Products Classic here in Lancaster, Ohio. Carol Giannotti Block, who bowled a 267 in the last game to defeat Carolyn Doran Ballard, is up first. And you saw her average on the TV pair, a lofty 228, and you just saw her bowl a 267, but I feel sorry for Carolyn Doran Ballard. How would you like to bowl a 235 and lose? Mm. Oh. It's no fun, but it's got a, you know, that's it, bowling. It, you got it. Marianne DeRupo is up now. She won in Omaha earlier this year, has five national titles to her credit. <laughs> Sakasama, New Jersey is her hometown. And how many times tonight have we seen that pin standing? Especially on lane 12. Seems to be a, maybe a little bit less drive on lane 12. The, the conditioner's carried down a little further, and they're not kicking out the 10 pin. Marianne also changing balls to shooter spare. Now Marianne's tried something interesting. She's actually dropping the ball so she gets the weight on her left hand. Watch her, she's gonna push with her left hand so she can relax her right arm. Pushing off with the left so the right arm will relax so she can open up here in the top of her backswing. She'll start to open her hand and then she pulls it through. Great finish position. All the ladies tonight, very strong, very athletic ladies. time the 10 jostled over. Ryan DeRupo is an athlete at South Carolina. As we look now at Carol Giannotti Block, who wants to say a big hello and a keep your spirits up to Jim Lee. He's a PBA regional bowler and a good friend. And he's in a health battle, and we'd like to echo her sentiments to, to Jim to keep those spirits up. And, and good luck with, with everything. That's right, Jim. That's from all the players out here on tour. Carol's starting just like, like she started last, last game. Let's have another one just like the other one. You're just joining us. Carol Giannotti Block pulled eight straight strikes and then had two spares, but that became a moot point. A 267 final for Carol Giannotti Block in her opening match against Carolyn Dorn Ballard, and now she's got a turkey to start things out against Marion DeRupo. We've already had a couple of 300 games here this week. Michelle Feldman and Karen Stroud doing the honors here at the Tiki Lanes. Now, Marion DeRupo is on course to repeat her financial situation from last year. Last year, she earned $92,000 throughout the year. This year, she's up to $64,000 already with seven events, including this one, remaining. Now she came in a little bit light, changing her angle a bit, trying to kick out the 10, left to 7. It was a good shot. The challenge was going to be to carry on lane 12, and it seems that Carol Giannotti blocks the one who's found out how to do it best. Went to the outside on that one. It's also been an emotional break for Mary Ann. Her roommate, Alita Sill, her Alita Sill's grandfather passed away. We want to extend our condolences to Alita and her family. And also Mary Ann, uh, Mary Ann's father, Paul, is ill, and she wants to know that she's thinking of him. Now, this has been a real scientific endeavor for her. She drilled eight balls. She's used eight to ten balls this week. So she's been searching for the right solution all week long and playing it right, though, because she qualified number two. Now, this ball not really driving. She's not getting a lot of finish out of the ball. But she's getting the light carry right there. And Carol Giannotti blocks ball, and the strike string is over at three as she has trouble with the 10-pin on 12. 
We told her not to blink, you'd miss her. We missed her during that replay. She is quick. And that goes to show all of you at home that you don't have to take that much time on the approach to be a good bowler. You do what's right for you. And as Anne-Marie Dugan said, leaving the 10 isn't bad as long as you knock it down with your second shot. Carol wants to say hi to Neil, her husband, who's not able to be out here watching. And she's got the rest of the family here. It was great she was able to take the family to Niagara Falls and Orlando and nation's capital in D.C. She put a lot of miles on, though. Yeah, but, you know, once in a lifetime, they're over here to visit. There's that shot coming up light. Just slid, never turned over. She was in a little deeper on that shot. This has been a tough spare this week. And I can see why. Now, we saw three in a row in our last show. We saw two in a row, and you, you warned us it's that pin behind because the ball goes one way, the pin goes the other, and the guy behind gets missed. And you just saw that, and she, the ball hooked away, and the two pin went to the right. And it's two, it's two in a row for Marianne DeRupo, and she takes a four-pin edge over Carol Giannotti block. Much better rotation on that ball. The ball drove harder. Her high game this week was a 268. Her low game was 169. So we look at the scoring. Kind of checkered. You might take a note that Marianne's using a duller ball, duller finish than some of the other players. That's because her ball speed is so firm. She... She throws the ball very hard, so a dollar ball allows the ball to roll a little bit sooner. Thought it came up a little high, but it did the job. Marianne DeRupo with the turkey in four, five, and six. So we will continue with this semifinal match between Marianne DeRupo and Carol Giannotti Block in just a moment. Welcome back. You just saw Carol Giannotti Block's approach here on the sixth frame, and she left herself an ugly split. Came up light the last shot, leaving the 2-8, now going high, leaving the 4-10. A little soft with this ball. Ball drove very hard. Now she had an open frame, couldn't convert the 2-8. Let's see what happens here. And she just gets... The four and the ten remain, so two open frames in a row. Well, that's a tough split to convert. It's not yeah. picked up too often, even by the professionals. She wanted to make sure she got the one pin. Two opens have really hurt her, but she's still in the match if she can start to strike. And how frustrating has this been for her? Six second-place finishes. And she picks up her fourth strike in the match, her first after two open frames and a spare. This is Marianne DeRupo stepping up for her shot in the seventh as we take a look at Rookies of the Year. We've got two of them in our telecast tonight. Marianne DeRupo won it in 1992, and Liz Johnson, our top qualifier, whom we haven't seen just yet, was Rookie of the Year in 1996. She was an academic All-American, Marianne DeRupo was, as somebody dropped a drink or a beverage back here, and the noise kind of rattled her, and she's smart to set the ball down. Academic All-American, she also played softball and was an All-American in softball. Quite an athlete. Now she changed her specs on her bowling ball. One inch forward, a half an inch under, shortened the span. What would make a bowler go through such major modifications? Well, she changed it because she was having trouble holding out of the ball. She wanted to be able to relax her arm swing more, relax her grip more. So the more you pitch your thumb under, the easier it is to relax. That's assuming you can get out of the ball. So it's not good for everyone. You need to check with your pro shop operator and see what's the best fit for you. Sent that ball sailing. Just didn't catch it. Watch, look at the rotation. The ball's spinning. Didn't get into a roll at all. She didn't release that ball well. And 
she converts in the seventh after three in a row and four, five, and six. Still leads the match by 21 pins as she makes a little adjustment on her grip, possibly putting in a piece of tape there. And there you see the numbers. A strike for Giannotti Block in the seventh, a spare for DeRupo. I mentioned she didn't get a good release. She obviously lost the ball. She added some tape there. In addition to going forward with her thumb, though, and more palm pitch, she reversed her fingers or went away with her fingers and shortened up her span. Because if you were under with your fingers and an inch under with your thumb, it would be nearly impossible to get out of the bowling ball. You'd be locked up in it. Well, she put in the right piece of tape, that's for sure. And that's what makes a pro a pro. You make the adjustments that you need to make. And, and she said this week she was grinding it out. It was a, a, an entire week of adjustments. As we look at Carol Giannotti Block's maximum score, 235. She punches out here working on a strike in the seventh frame, now up in the eighth on 12. No problem with a 10 pin this time. She closes the door down to 11 pins, and she was trailing by 21 when she stood up. Well, Marianne only working on a 216 pace. That would be strike spare off the sheet. So Carol Giannotti block is definitely still right in this match. Ninth frame, she swings over to lane 11. Hold it. She yelled, hold it, you heard her. And Marion DeRupo is pointing out to Rick Ramsey whether or not she can have a, uh, a re-rack, I believe, and he grants it. Well, she's allowed two each game on the telecast. If she wants additional re-racks, Rick Ramsey, our tournament director, has to grant that. And you can see a few of the pins a little bit off spot. You see the dark circle underneath is where they should actually be spotted. So we shouldn't see the dark circle. So mm -hmm. if you see the circle, it's a little off, depending on how much of it you see. That was a healthy re-wrap. She's got five strikes and one spare in her last six frames. This ball, much better release. Watch it start to roll and flip. Coming in light, head pin off the wall, taking out the whole left side. Very serious bowler. And that tells the story. Two strikes. She could shut out Carol Giannotti Block. That's all right. It happens. We're talking about knocking 10 down, and she did it. That's right. Carol Giannotti Block was the benefactor of a Brooklyn the first match. Marianne DeRupo this match. Crossing over. Actually, a solid Brooklyn. Now, if she were to get nine here and spare, we could have a tie. for Marianne DeRupo. That was a much better shot. She trusted that one. And that gives her at least second place. And a shot at first. Well, in that case, 9 out of 10 ain't bad. 248 for, 245 rather, for Marianne DeRuco as Carol Giannotti Block steps up, finishing third, getting $3,800. Working on a turkey, 7, 8, and 9. Coming up high, Carol's goal right now to be Bowler of the Year, and I think she's well on her way. She's had a great start, nine shows more than anybody else out here. She's already earned close to $80,000 with seven events remaining, so a very successful season and is a category leader in virtually every stat. So Carol Giannotti Block will finish things up. Marianne Rupo gets ready for Liz Johnson.
And now it is time for our no-nonsense shot of the day, and it came in the semifinal match between Carol Giannotti Block and Marianne DeRupo. Marianne already struck once in the 10th, needed this strike to shut out Carol Giannotti Block, and it was a beauty. And she finished with a 245 to 212. That strike was very important, and it was our no-nonsense shot of the day. And that no-nonsense shot means Marianne DeRupo has climbed up one run of the ladder to the championship match where she faces Liz Johnson, both of them right-handers, and it is Liz Johnson who is going to bowl first. Liz Johnson also bowled two of our highest games this week, not counting the two 300 games. She bowled a 298 and a 279 here at Tiki Lanes. And as I said earlier, 2-0 and as the top seed. light start. Now here's a study in contrast. Marianne DeRupo, we talked about her earlier, having used eight to ten different balls here. She drilled eight balls while she was here. Conversely, Liz Johnson only used three balls the entire week. Well, she was able to find what she needed and keep it in play. If you get lucky and get to the right ball early or make the right guess, then that's all you need. In 1998, Marion DeRupo has bowled 611 games, carrying a 214-plus average. This is her 32nd career TV appearance. Her record, 30 and 26. <laughs> Send those folks at MasterCard back to the vault. When she gets that good release on the ball, she has a pretty nice shot out there, it looks like. You mentioned how athletic she is. It shows in her bowling. Very powerful. These are her career dollars. 376 plus. That's in thousands, folks. One of the great senior PBA veterans, Don Johnson, told me that he feels she's one of the players that could compete out on the men's tour. <laughs> High 467. This split virtually impossible to pick up. It doesn't happen very often. She's going to go for the two pins, try to get the wood, the four and the seven. Well, you have to be creative to convert those spares, and you have to be creative to come up with a prize that's unique from other bowling trophies and awards, and they have done just that. Let's take a look at what's up for grabs here at this tournament. Look at this beautiful trophy for the Visionary Bowling Products Classic. It's actually a music box with sparkling snow sprinkled throughout, a dozen roses, the signature pin, a watch, and, of course, the big check. That was Liz Johnson. Still trying to figure things out on lane 12. She's working off a spare in her opening shot. Well, she leaked the ball right in her first shot. That ball, she went straight at it, very direct, pointing the ball. That's pretty much her style. But jump in the nose, leaving the 3-6-10. You saw her. She has bowled against DeRuco once before in a title championship match. Ooh, two out of three. Mm. A lot of the players seeming to have trouble going across at those right side spares. A little more skid than they are expecting. Ball's not grabbing the lane, no friction, and it's just continuing to slide. Look at that sliding right by the three pin. So Liz Johnson's struggling here in these opening frames of this championship match. And when you're 24 years old, you don't have a lot of deep resources to draw back on. But she is a very successful bowler in that she has five national titles, three of them in 1997. As you look at Marianne DeRupo, who's focused on her own game. A strike in an open frame for her. And now the spare, open spare combination for Liz Johnson. If you notice, when Liz shot that spare, the 3-6, same type of combination she just shot, she used her strike ball this time instead of the spare ball to get a little rotation so she wouldn't slide by. 17 events she has bowled in in 1998. 15, 15 caches. 
I was going to wait till she shot to accept that cut. Oh, all right. All right. So it's strike open strike for Marianne DeRupo in this title match. Her last win was in Omaha, Nebraska. She had a win in Rockford, Illinois last year and then has one win successively in 93, 94, and 95. She's actually on a good run right now. She's made three of the last four shows we've had. It's the first time in this match she's left the 10. It's a nice release, but the six pin laid in the channel. Needed just a little more turn on it. Look at the release. Good rotation. Watch the ball start to drive. You can see it in a roll. But hit in half pocket. Six pin lane in the channel. So it's strike, open, strike, spare for Marianne DeRupo. For Liz Johnson, she's working off a spare in the third. She defeated... Marianne DeRupo twice. There are the numbers, 205 to 183, 211 to 170. Ooh, that, that, one. that thing went wide right, didn't come back. Sent that way right. But she's been pointing it, hasn't been getting it to go. Watch how she walks to left, then right. Back to the right at the end there. She actually goes right, left, right. Couldn't quite see it from that angle. Sent that ball way right. She's been pointing it. It's been punching the nose. She tried to give it a little room. Didn't get back. You know, she said she was working on that last step of her approach. She's trying to make it shorter. And she noticed in looking at videos of her successful runs last year in 1997 compared to her bowling in the summer of 98. And she said her last step had gotten very long. So this summer she worked on shortening it during the break between summer and fall. She actually moved up six inches on the approach and that shortened up her last step. She has a five-step approach, very short for five steps and still does have quite a long last step. Mm -hmm. Oh, see that one coming in high. Well, she has no room where she's playing right now with the ball she's playing with. She can't go at it, it'll hook. If she lets it up the board straighter, it won't come back. She does look like she's a little down on her ball speed, though, right now. Not thrown quite as hard as I saw her throughout the week. Now, her best finish in 1998 was a third-place finish in Jacksonville back in February. She's guaranteed tonight to be better than that, because the worst she can do is second. So, Marion DeRupo has opted to take a re-rack on lane 12 as we take a quick look at the Pro-Am winners at Tiki Lanes, that little guy in front with the blonde hair is 10 years old, and the gentleman in back asked me not to mention his name, but they're all big winners here, and I believe you bowled with some of them this week, Jen, earlier in the, in the week. Did, yeah, Mary and, I, Mary and I both did. Leaving the four pin a little high, and again, she's working on something, trying to hit the pocket and stay clean here. You can see she's really focused here. 14, 9, and 1 in match play. The record goes straight at her spare and gets it. And this is a very close match through five frames. Just seven pins difference between Marianne DeRupo and Liz Johnson. Well, as I mentioned, trying to just hit the pocket. She knows that Liz is not lined up. People have to make, the bowlers make conscious choices, whether they want to try to strike or whether they want to stay with something that's safer if their opponent's not lined up. She wants to leave something she can pick up. Now she credits Alita Sill with helping her out here this week. It's Sue Jazorski that Liz Johnson said she worked with. So bowlers helping bowlers here in Lancaster, Ohio. The championship match will continue, but first, these messages. And it is time now for our little known fact. Two PWBA members represented their countries in the 1988 Seoul Olympics. The only time bowling was a sport. Do you know who they are? 
I do. Well, then you can read the screen. <laughs> Debbie McMullen and Carol Giannotti Block. Carol represented Australia and Debbie represented U Team USA. That was the last time, the first time that bowling was an Olympic sport. Of course, that was in the Seoul Korea Games. Liz yeah. Johnson now has a new piece of equipment here. Right, she made a ball change. I just want to mention quick that that Little known fact was courtesy of the International Bowling Museum and Hall of Fame in St. Louis, Missouri. Make sure you go visit them. Well, that paid off, that ball change. Good ball change. She went to something that's not going to drive as hard for her, so she can go more direct at the pocket. That's what she's comfortable with doing. She moved in and got her first strike. New equipment, new position. Did it just in time. Sixth frame, seven pin difference between Liz Johnson and Mary Ann DeRupo. Both ladies striking in the sixth, both ladies with spares in the fourth and fifth. Well, she had an obvious choice. She knew she had nothing and had to make a move there. That, that ball coming up light, elected to open up a little bit, and it didn't get back. She's going to change balls to shoot this spare. It's a little bit easier when... For in Liz's case, you could see she clearly had nothing. Sometimes, in Marianne's case, when she's hitting the pocket, that's a harder choice, yes. whether to change or not change. And Marianne DeRupo has three strikes in this match, in the first frame, the third frame, and the sixth, so you're right. You, you don't know if that is the time to make a change. Her average this week, over 215. She's got it here, you know, last night in the final round of match play after an evening of having a tough shot. We asked her, how did she approach that final round? Well, the last round in the match play was very tough for me. I approached it with the attitude to try to stay out of trouble. What that meant for me is to make spares and to leave spares that are makeable. So I played it the safe way. Um, if I won a few matches, that was great, but I was in a position that spare making was key for me. And if I struck, the more power to me. And as you can see, she has been making her spares, but right now she's working on a couple of strikes. Only one open frame. That was back in the second. And she it, had a split. It appears that she's made that same choice tonight, going with something that's going to keep her safe, as we were talking about earlier, but maybe won't carry as much as something else might. Looked like a good shot. Ball starting to drive here, but again, half pocket. Six pin lane in the channel. Just not quite getting that finish. She could make a little move, but she struck four times. It's, it's a fine line, and again, go back to the tip of the 10 pin, pick it up. So important to mark, especially as you run out of frames. That was her shot in the eighth. This is now the eighth for Liz Johnson. And it's funny, she has never lost a championship match. She's 2-0 and as the number one seed. Yeah, from number one seed. Now, she has lost once when she wasn't number one, came up the ladder, and that was to Carol Giannotti Block in Baltimore in 1996. Things aren't looking good for her tonight. Yeah. She's in jeopardy here of having that first loss from the top seed. This ball never turned over, hit right of the head pin. See how it drove straight through. Leaving a washout, 1-2-10. She wants to hit the left of the head pin with the ball and shoot it over into the 10. Oh! Came in through the back door and got it. Is that how it's supposed to go? <laughs> yeah. Well, we write the book as we go along, so it went off the back wall, side wall, channel, and out and hit the 10 pin. Watch your face. You know she was breathing heavy after that one. We talked about Marianne DeRupo being a college athlete. And she knocks them all down now in the ninth. Liz Johnson played for Moorhead State University and she was 1993 College Bowler of the Year. Marianne taking some time there. Re-racking. That's her second re-rack. Trying off her hand, stepping up. 
So the big shot here wants to set up a strike. Her maximum score is 216, but it's got to begin with a strike here, and it does. Now that was a beautiful shot. She set that ball very early and got it into a quick roll. That was the difference between kicking out those tens or not kicking out the tens. Watch it off her hand real early. Look at that, almost at the foul line, but the ball's in an early roll. It's going to allow it to break sooner and hit harder. That's the difference between going through the pins and coming in a little around behind the head pin. It makes a big difference in pin carry. She needs the first strike here to shut out Liz Johnson. Not going to do it, so a spare strike here would be 196. Liz Johnson can strike out for 197. Oh boy. Another close one. Yep. Converts the spare, now needs the strike here to keep the pressure on. Pin count could prove to be important. Mm -hmm. A very important strike is bowled by Marianne DeRupo, but it may be too little too late. If Liz Johnson can punch out, this match is hers, and her record will remain perfect from the number one position. Well, she's only struck twice this match, and on this lane, she's gone 7-7, seven, seven, strike 7. So she's only hit the pocket once. And I'm quite sure she's still fishing out there. She hooked a winner. She found her spot. She made a move there. And there's nothing Marianne DeRupo can do but wait. Real direct. Set it down about the eighth board. Just up and at him. Now she crosses over to 11. Meyer, she stays on 12 because this is a 10th frame now. Needs two more strikes. Just went back to get her rosin bag. So Marianne DeRupo is our champion. She wins the Visionary Bowling Products Classic and blemishes Liz Johnson's perfect 2-0 record from the number one position. We'll be back. The championship round finals of the Visionary Bowling Products Classic are brought to you by Budweiser and Bud Light, the official beers of bowling. And by MasterCard, there are some things in life money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by AMF Bowling Worldwide, the largest owners and operators of bowling centers in the world and one of the leading makers of bowling products. AMF always means fun. Our champion is flanked by Jim Wonders, the president of Visionary Bowling Products, and Greg Russell, the general manager. For Jan Schmidt, I'm Leander Roddy saying so long from Tiki Lanes in Lancaster, Ohio, where Marion DeRupo is your champion. Be sure to be with us Friday, October 2nd at 1 a.m. for the championship finals of the Track Triton Open. And that is in Rossford, Ohio. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader.